Lakini actually means God in the morning, in the local language and the world. I was raised in this beautiful city of the Sioux that overlooks Lake Victoria. The Victoria is a good source of water and fish for the local people. When I was growing up, the first thing my mom, aunts, and parents taught me was how to cook fish. And then my uncles, my fathers, and my grandfathers would teach me how to read the good book. As I graduated from high school and headed towards college, I decided to book a farewell meal for my family. When I finished cooking, I read the book and the family started eating. When I looked at my father, he didn't seem too impressed with my cooking. Apparently, I had not flipped the fish over, so his portion of the fish was raw. After the dinner, I went on to college, and I studied construction management. I became an expert in net zero construction and sustainable community development. The importance of development that preserves our God-given natural resources, like Lake Victoria, my favorite fish, and the values taught to me from the good book remained with me. The good book says, be fruitful and multiply. And in Africa, we have done so. We can learn one mom, many wives, many children, many grandchildren. So we have relatives that we like and relatives that we do not like <laughs> as much. As a result of our multiplication, the African population is heading towards 1.5 billion. As we head towards 1.5 billion people, the rate at which we produce waste is also increasing. Currently, the rate at which we produce waste is at 200 trillion tons a year. This rate includes the rate of waste that we produce directly and the rate of waste that is dumped onto our continent by other people. The good book says, be fruitful and multiply. We have been fruitful in dumping waste within our cities. As a result of the waste that we dump within our cities, we lose 1.2 million people per year prematurely to deaths caused by pollution. We also lose our young children who suffer and die from chronic diseases due to high infant mortality because they live very close to the dam sites. As you look at our cities, you see our dam sites rising. They rise until they become like mountains. They reach aggressively towards the sun. Our natural mountains, like Mount Elbow, Mount Kenya, and Mount Kilimanjaro, also sit almost close to the heavens. Looking at Mount Kilimanjaro, it is a beautiful sight to behold. It is a snow-capped mountain, covered by the clouds, right under the sun, acacia trees surrounding it, occasionally a giraffe or two in the periphery. When we look at our Mount Plastic that we have created, it is also a sight to behold. It also is aggressively heading towards the heavens. It has moisture or water dripping down its surfaces. There is, of course, no sand in the trees or vegetation around it. But occasionally, you might see a boat or two 
increased around it. The question I have for you and I today is, are we being good stewards of the earth? The good book says, be fruitful and multiply. And we have done so. We get married, sometimes it's polygamous. We produce cousins, nephews, nieces, and aunts. So we have relatives that we like and those that we tolerate. But we continue to multiply and be fruitful. And as a result of our multiplication, our African population is approaching 1.5 as we approach 1.5 billion people. The rate that we produce energy is also increasing. Currently, we are at 700 terawatts annually. To meet these energy demands, we've been cutting our trees. We are cutting our trees faster than any other continent. So our tree consumption per capita is the highest. The good book says, be fruitful and multiply. In Africa, we have been fruitful. We have been fruitful in cutting down our trees to meet our energy demands and the luxury needs of ours. We lose 3.9 hectares of trees annually and our forests are at the risk of extinction. As a result of this, we face desertification, erosion, and deforestation. As a result of our deforestation, our forests, including the Congo Forest, the East African Forest, and the Morocco African Forests, are being replaced by their land. When Africa is still perceived as a jungle by others, we need to get concerned about concepts like tree canopy, tree equity, and the benefits of trees provide, besides thinking of it as firewood. We have even created new fuels that I call plastic coal. It is when we combine charcoal with plastic bottles, wood, that's the bottles to meet our COVID needs. We lose 150 lives per day due to smoke pollution. The good book says, be fruitful, multiply, subdue, and dominate the earth. My question to you and I today is, have we been good stewards? The good book says, be fruitful and multiply, and we have done so in Africa. Our marriages have resulted in stepchildren, step grandchildren, and step great grandchildren. So we have relatives that we like and those we pretend to marry. But we continue to multiply and be fruitful because the process is enjoyable. As a result of our multiplication, our population is approaching 1.5 billion. As our population approaches 1.5 billion, our waters cannot support our needs. To try and meet this need, our women and children walk an average of 30 minutes per day to fetch five gallons of water per family. The average American household uses 550 gallons. The good book says, be fruitful and multiply. In Africa, we have been fruitful. We have been fruitful in choking our water supplies in conjunction with others who dump their waste into our waters. As a result, our waters have lumps, clumps, in chunks of plastic and are no longer clear. Our waters are plastics that resemble the rainbow. 
I call the heart of justice. How long is it going to be? As a result, one third of our population is considered water insecure because they do not have clean drinking water. We are contaminating our water bodies, like the mysterious river Congo, which is the deepest river in the world, the majestic river Nile, the longest river in the world, in the, in, 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 in the world. and our very own Lake Victoria, the largest freshwater tropical lake in the world. We have created a plastic field a zone where plastics live in our waters. They choke our water supply, other organisms, including my favorite fish. The group book says we fruitful and multiply. We punish, subdue, and dominate the earth. My question to you and I again is this. Have we been good stewards of the earth? In conclusion, our growing population is directly correlated with the increased waste production, increased energy consumption, and our increased water demand. All these issues can be solved by developing our community utilizing net zero principles and implementing net zero infrastructure. Under net zero production, is equal to consumption, and consumption is equal to production. Consequently, we produce as much energy as we use. We produce as much water as we use. We would convert our waste to value. So we use as much waste as we produce. Africa has enough resources to meet our energy and water needs. We do still have underground and tap water. And we have the capacity to convert our waste to value. Finally, in meeting net zero standards, we mitigate carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide emissions, provide sustainable infrastructure, and strengthen our economy. We can provide new job types, new products, new materials and open up an avenue for exploitation and employment. In closing, I recently tried to do a family dinner again to try and show off my new skills. I cooked and read a good book and we began to eat. I looked at my mother's face and she was not impressed with it. Apparently, a piece of plastic was stuck in her portion of the bush. I thought, next time, I'll try some coat meat. Maybe that time, I'll be successful. Then I remembered, the, co the goats are eating at one plastic. Maybe I'll be able to love it. The question is, will there be enough water for the tilapia to be submerged for me to live?